So before we get started with this month's book haul, um, nobody has nobody has asked about the uh, the giveaway from last month. The winners have been chosen, and they are all going to go out down here when I send out. See, they're all down here, um, but they're all going to go out. I uh, hope I don't screw up the framing. Um, they're all going to go out when I send out autumn my autumn offerings book. When I'm going to send all that stuff out at one time because I get a bulk shipping discount. So please just be patient. I appreciate you. On with the book haul. Hello everybody. E here. Welcome back to another book haul. This one is for... We're going into October. So this is September's book haul. I have a lot of books to talk about. So grab some snacks. Kick back and relax. I did not mean to make that rhyme. And we're going to jump into it one at a time. So first we're going to do gifts that I got. I got this uh, scary stories, three scary stories to tell in the dark. Uh, more tales to chill your bones from my friend, good friend, Angie. Um, she was nice enough to send me this. It's awesome. Um, I'm going to be reading it off and on to my kids uh, once we get done with the Halloween tree. Um, we're going to be starting that on uh, the 1st. And then we'll go through, I don't know, I think it's like 12 chapters, maybe, I, I can't remember exactly how many chapters it is, but we'll do a chapter tonight, and then we're going to jump into this one. So expect a review from that toward the end of the month. Next up, I have all of these are gifts from my friend Terry. Um, I didn't get a chance to unbox all of these because I didn't have space, either I didn't have time on the channel to unbox them, or the... Uh, or she she needed the uh, the confirmation because she sent a lot of these from me paperback swap. Um, so, so actually, let's see here one two. I think all of them are paperback swap. All of them were sent, and she needed the confirmation right away. And I couldn't get out to do a video right then. But the first one is the one I've already talked about in my October TBR is uh, the Witching Hour. And yes, I'm already I'm already a hundred pages into it. I'm liking it. I'm not loving it, but I am liking it. Uh, Anne Rice, I don't, her characters don't talk to me. They're kind they're more affluent and Southern and I, I don't know, but Southern like debutante Southern and they don't really talk to me. I'm enjoying her, the, her descriptions of scenery and the, uh, the creepiness of it, but yeah, I just, I, I'm not in there with any of the characters. Um, let me put this one down below that then I she also Terry sent me uh, we have the interview with the vampire and I actually got this on the last day of last month um, after I had shot my book haul video had I just waited <laughs> but uh look at this author photo y'all look at that author photo that's Anne Rice with a doll I hate dolls I hate dolls and then cry of heaven sounds amazing let me read you the first line of cry to heaven so Hide your ears, children. Cover your ears, because Guido Mafio was castrated when he was six years old and sent to study with the finest singing masters in Naples. So this is about, uh, I'm not exactly sure what it's about, but it's like a choir, a uh, soprano choir, and I guess from what I'm reading there is the singers are eunuchs. And then Interview with the Vampire. If you don't know what Interview with the Vampire is about, uh, where, 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 let, me, let me know the address of your rock so I can come visit you. Um, this one I have absolutely, I'm going to read you the description of this one because I don't, I, it's literally, I told her yes when she asked me about it. She's like, hey, do you want this? And literally I was like, yes, because of the cover. And that is The Tale of Raw Head, Bloody Bones by Jack Wolf. That is an awesome cover. But, uh, meet Tristan Hart, a brilliant young man of means. The year is 1751 and it's, <laughs> it's historical fiction. Oops. I'm not big on historical fiction. The year is 1751, and at the age of 20, he leaves home to study medicine at the Great Hospital of St. Thomas in London. It will be a monumentous year for the intellectually ambitious Mr. Hart, who, as well as being a student of Locke and Descartes, I think that's Descartes? I don't know. Um, and a promising young physician is also, alas, psychotic. Rock on. Um, he is obsessed with the nature of pain and medically preventing it. Huh. But his equally strong and much harder to control obsession is is with causing it. So he's a sadist, um, but he wants to try and figure out how to prevent it. Uh, desperate to understand his deviant desires before they are his undoing, he uses the new tools of the age, reason and science and skepticism, to plumb the depths of his own dark mind. 
And then the rest of it is, you know, how great the book is and profoundly imaginative, unexpectedly funny. Yeah, I'm not going to read all that. But, uh, yeah, so this one, it, it sounds interesting, but it's also kind of a chunk of a book. It's 543 pages. This is one that I probably will get to, but it's going to be a while. Um, I'm going to put it on my TBR shelf in my room um, so that that way that, you know, I know I'll actually end up getting to it. Next two were sent to me for review by Atria Publishing, and one of them I might have to break, not contract, but I might have to, it might take a while before I get to it, but we'll talk about that in a second. But uh, the Doll Factory is the first one. This looks absolutely amazing. You see that shininess? That's only on the glass that's over the butterfly. So it's like a butterfly jar, cage, whatever you want to call it. The, the cover design of this is absolutely amazing, and I love it to bits. Um, I have no idea what this is about, but I'm going to be reading it very soon, um, probably starting in November, because it's not going to be on my October TBR. Like I said, I've already got the stuff up there. I'm, I'm focusing mainly on Halloween stuff, and I forgot to tell you guys, I'm also going to, if I get through with all that stuff, which I probably will, um, I'm going to be reading uh, The Haunting of Hill House by, uh, I can never remember her name, but you know who wrote the book. Um, let's see here. Shirley Jackson. Yes, I don't know why it took me looking into this book to figure that out. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, I won't be getting to this one until November, but it'll probably be the first thing I read in November because it was sent to me for review. Next up, uh, I got the most recent Charlie Parker book by John Connolly, which is a book of bones. Y'all see how thick this book is? It's almost 700, it's 674 pages. We gonna be here for a while. But... More importantly, it comes out on uh, October 15th, uh, 2019, so in October, this is October. Um, this is like book 12 or 15, I can't remember which, it, this is a long way down the line. So, I had a friend, I have a friend named Amanda, who was kind enough to send me books 3 and 4, so I also got The Killing Kind and The White Road, this is number 3, this is number 4. Um, I was going through my collection of paperbacks, and I found I have Dark Hollow. So I have this one, um, and I ordered, because I found it really cheap on A Books, I ordered a $3 copy with free shipping, it was nuts, of uh, Every Dead Thing, which is book one. Um, I'm going to read at least these four paperbacks, and Atria is going to be sending me books, uh, the two books before the last one, so I'll only have all those books right there in the middle that I'll be missing. So I'll be starting the series, reading the, those first four books, and then reading the last three books if that makes sense. Um, I, I figure with any series, usually it's the books at the beginning and the books at the end that are the best. So hopefully, if you guys want to let me know about good ones in the middle that I definitely should try, uh, let me know down there in the doobly-doo. Okay, next up, um, I want to give another shout out to, uh, to a Stranger Dream bookmarks. So there's, they got the Chad Lutsky bookmark on sale. You know how big of a fan I am of Chad. Uh, Chad Lutsky, he comes in the chat every now and again, which we won't be doing anymore, sadly. Customizable machetes. This says Edward. Edward. The articulated beetle. Yeah. Now I get, if you use my code LORN5, you get 10% off at checkout. And then we have the Skelebros, this one in a fedora and beach shorts. And then this one over here, just the awesomely colored pink and blue skeleton. So hop on over. I'll leave a link down there in the doobly-doo. Jump on over there and check them out. Next, we're going to go very quickly through a bunch of Dean Coots books that I already own, but I wanted to put on my shelf. They literally only got these. Almost all the rest of these books, until I say differently, are uh, books that I got at the library for their dollar a bag. So you bring a bag. I always bring trash bags. They're always happy to see me because they're trying to get rid of these books. So I have, I'm just going to hold these up. Some of my favorites, uh, The Servants of Twilight, The Voice, the, vo the Voice of the Night, and Twilight Eyes. I got them all in hardcover. Um, I'm going to put these back here, okay, way back here. So if I'm, I'm leaning off camera. 
Um, this one is a, a copy of Soul Survivor. It's signed by... This means absolutely nothing to me. Um, what, if you guys want this, once I end up reading it, it's going to be a while because I'm reading one Dean Koontz book a month in chronological order. But uh, it's signed by the author. If, you, if anybody's interested in this, let me know down there in the doobly-doo. And when I read it and I review it, Remind me again, and I'll send it to you. I don't care about the signed copy, and I don't, I don't recall liking that book. Um, this one, I don't have a paperback copy of that one, or else I wouldn't have grabbed it. But uh, this one is another one I don't have a paperback copy of. It's from the corner of his eye. I remember this one being terrible also. Uh, then we have uh, Lawrence Blocks. I love this series, the Matthew Scudder series. The Devil Knows You're Dead. I actually got a hardcover of this. All of this was a dollar. Not each. But everything, all of this I fit in one bag. So, you got the Lawrence Block, The Devil Knows You're Dead. And then I got another copy of Memnock the Devil. And then I don't have, I, I got another copy of this to sell. And then uh, Servant of Bones by Anne Rice. So I got a bunch of Anne Rice stuff this time. I'll put all these back here. I'm going to try and arrange these so I don't have... There you go. Uh, I want I want the, the big stuff on the bottom to form a nice base. Okay, we're going to get, get into actually more gifts. I just realized that. Uh, so if you saw my unboxing, uh, my buddy Nick, Scary Saiyan, Spooky Noodles, um, he sent me uh, Demonic by Stephen Laws and the original cut version of the stand in paperback. So this is more of a collector's copy. I'm going to, I got to clean it up some and whatnot. But uh, this collector's copy is going up on my shelf. And then this one, I do need, I said my collection, my Stephen Laws collection was complete. It is not. I still need Chasm. So I'm looking for that book. But Demonic, so I got that one. It's a very cool cover. It almost, it almost reminds me of H.R. Geiger. And it is not going to do just, this camera's not going to do it justice. And this one, of course, is my favorite stand cover. Um, okay. <laughs> trying to trying to keep this stuff in order over here. And then finally from, from Nick, he sent me Hell Train because uh, he, he knows I like books with trains on the cover and it's a skull on a, a track switch and then the train in the background it is a very, very nice copy. I need to put this over here so that I remember to take an Instagram picture of it. You'll probably see that up there on my Instagram before you actually see this video. Uh, next, the two more Dean Koontz books, just because I could, um, that I don't have, Odd Hours and The Whispering Room. The, yeah, The Whispering Room. Uh, this is the only Jane Hawk novel I have. Uh, I'll be collecting them very slowly. Uh, if I can't find them all for cheap, extremely cheap, I'm talking like a quarter a piece, um, then I'll just be reading the, uh, the e-book versions that I got for a review on NetGalley that I DNF'd. Um, they, they always send me the, the latest Dean Koontz, and I always tell them I don't want them, and they just send them anyways. So I'll be reading them that way. Uh, I think we're getting into the other books from the... Yeah, yeah. All the, all the rest of the stuff, until I say otherwise, is from the library. I got Tom Wolfe's The Right Stuff, because people keep on recommending me this book. So I will be reading it probably next year. Um, I'm not sure if it's fiction or non-fiction, but it, the men had it. Jaeger, Conrad, Grissom, Glenn, heroes. The first Americans in space, battling the Russians for control of the heavens. <laughs> How'd that turn out? Um, putting their lives on the line. The women had it. While Mr. Wonderful was aloft, it tore your heart out that the hero's wife down on the ground had to perform with the whole world watching. The TV press conference. What's in your heart? Do you feel with him while he's in orbit? Interesting. I did not know that's what that was about. Uh, these I solely bought to resell. I have no interest in the series whatsoever, but Paranormal Romance does really, really well on eBay and just the secondary market. But these are Janine Frost books, a Night Huntress novel. This one and these two. Um, so this one's called At Graves End. If anybody in the, in the comments wants these, they're yours for a buck a piece plus shipping. This one is One Foot in the Grave. They all have that typical urban fantasy cover with a, a rocking chick on the, on the front. Either she's on a motorcycle, she's in some kind of action pose. You know, uh, the typical. Uh, let's see here. And this one is Halfway to the Grave. And here she's in her sultry pose right there with her leg up because she's about to blast a fart. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyways, but uh, 
And then uh, these I got to try. Uh, I'm not a poetry dude, not at all. And after reading these already, I'm still not a poetry dude. Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass and Robert Frost, The Road Not Taken, and other poems. These are great for like quoting in a uh, in in books, uh, mainly because they're they're public domain, so you don't have to get the okay from the author because the authors are dead. Um, uh, in fact, I think Robert Frost. I'm pr I'm pretty sure Robert Frost has been gone. Um, there's not even a copyright page. What is up with that? I don't know. Does it have anything about Robert Frost in it? You would hope, right? I mean, you would hope that it was like, hey, here's what the dude, here's the dude's, uh, whatever. Um, yeah, 18, dude's definitely dead. He died, uh, died in 1963. So, yeah, the poetry books, if anybody's interested in these, you know what to do. Leave a comment down there in the doobly-doo. Okay, next up, I'm going to roll my table around so that I can get to these other ones. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, Fried Green Tomatoes, the movie, so I have that book. But I also got this one because it's by the same author, and this is called Daisy Fay and the Miracle Man. It sounded interesting. Fanny Flagg takes us on a journey to a South that only Southerners know, to a time when Blue Velvet was played at the senior prom and into the life of Daisy Fay Harper, a sassy, truth-telling heroine who just can't stay out of trouble or our hearts. What's more, she tell. What's more, she tells us everything. There, there is a significant lack of commas in this description. What's more, she tells us everything from what or who made her daddy and mama split, to what is really stashed in the freezer of her family's malt shop. Knowing fried green tomatoes, I'm wondering if. That's interesting. Daisy Fay is coming of age in the Gulf Coast Shell Beach, which is the end of the road of the South. The folks who head for Florida haven't discovered it yet, and aren't likely to, but it's a dandy place to meet local VIPs like hard-drinking Jimmy Snow, who uses his crop-dusting plane for both transportation and carrying out revenge, former socialite Mrs. Dot, who is trying to hold junior debutante meetings in the back of the bait shop, that's, that's awesome, um, and Daisy's own daddy who comes up with a mortgage scheme in which his daughter has to return from the dead in a carefully orchestrated miracle. The hell? Uh, they're all part of the fun that takes us down home, back to the 50s, and into the best story ever written of Texas. I don't know, that's a, that's a bold-ass statement. Or maybe anywhere else. So, remember how I said Anne Rice really isn't for me as far as, like, the debutante uh, socialite uh, South Southern... Things like this are. Where they're, where the upper class is picked on, that kind of thing, or you know, <laughs> holding meetings at the back of a bait shop. That's just, that that sounds funny. So I am all here for that. I gotta find a place to put these. So I'm gonna turn this just a little bit more, and we're gonna put these right right there. Okay. So next up we have the Princess Bride. Yes, I, this is part of that. Thing. Just tossed it in a bag. I was uh, just snatching things off like I was in one of those old uh, shopping spree games, you know, that just snatching things off the shelf. The Princess Bride. Holy shit. Yes. Um, I love the movie. Love the movie. Now I'm going to try the book. I have no idea what the... Something sticky. Oh, yeah, I had to clean that, clean that off. Um, I, had to, I didn't get all the... Obviously, I didn't get all the sticker gunk off this next one. Well, not the next one. The one after this. Our Hearts Will Burn Us Down by Anne Valente. This sounds interesting. Uh, and I, I just, I got it for the cover, if I'm honest. <laughs> Almost went into Earl there for a second. Um, oh, I'm not Earl. Who said I was Earl? As members of the yearbook committee, Nick, Zola, Matt, and Christina are eager to capture all the memorable moments of their junior year at Lewis and Clark High School. The plays and football games, dances and fun drives, teachers and classes that are the epicenter of their teenage lives. But how do you document our horrific tragedy a deadly school shooting by a classmate yes um i've been doing a lot of research on school shootings and mass shootings and all that stuff i did one project already that was very small very very tiny bit of it was was that aspect but i plan on doing a much bigger piece about it so uh yeah so uh, this is something it, it sounds interesting so i'm gonna jump into it there's more to the description but if you guys are interested in it you can look it up next up we have by young nesba Yes, it's not Joe Nesbo, it's Yo Nesba. Uh, Midnight Sun, hardcover. Very nice edition. It did have a sticky ass, stupid ass. I thought I got it all off. I didn't. Um, I'm going to have to try it again. These matte covers are really hard to clean up without ruining. 
Um, but yeah, this is another one that was just sitting on the on the shelf at the library. Um, mind you, like I said, all of these books were a dollar. All of them, total. All the ones that I said are from the library. I didn't spend a dollar a piece. A dollar total. And next up. We have a short story collection that's been on my radar for a while um, because it was getting such high praise from friends, um, friends who who I trust. There's a, well, not trust, friends who whose whose likes are in line with mine. Um, so I have plenty of friends that I disagree with constantly, um, and with those friends, I if they recommend a book, I don't read it. Um, if they say they hate a book, I am all over that joker. And this is one of those books that uh, like-minded reviewers, like-minded friends of mine have been raving about, and this is These Heroic Happy Dead Stories by Luke Mogelson. Mogelson? Mogelson. Yeah. It's a cool cover, too. I mean, it's just a suburban street, looks like. Um, and then you have, maybe it's not suburban. I don't know, but then uh, this nice little, anyways, it's nice. And it's got duckled edges. I'm going to love duckled edges. Yeah, you all have a discussion down there in the doobly-doo about whether or not you like pickled edges. <laughs> this one is one I have actually, the next two are one, are, next two are one? No. <laughs> the next two are books that uh, I've already read and I just want to copy from my shelf because I either, well this one I did in an audiobook. It's um, Not My Father's Son, which is absolutely amazing, by Alan Cumming. He's an actor that I, that I love, I adore. Um, and I wanted to get this uh, a hardcover edition. I, like I said, I've already read the audiobook, and I recommend reading it in audiobook. But this is going on my uh, nonfiction celebrity shelf. I actually have quite a few of these. Uh, I recommend this one. I recommend uh, the one by Kate Mulgrew, Born with Teeth, something like that, and uh, Choreography by Corey Feldman. Those are three of my favorite. I should do. I should do my favorite. Uh, what are these called? <laughs> these favorite celebrity biographies? Now, I, I don't like vapid celebrities, even though Corey Feldman is a bit vapid. His younger career had a lot of stuff going on. But I'm not here for like a Kim Kardashian kind of, you know, kind, kind of biography. So, next up, we ha and also I'm not into business before you. Kim Kardashian is actually a great businesswoman, eh? I don't, I don't care about business either, so I don't care about makeup, so none of that stuff has anything to do with me. Next up, we have Lola, which was a very decent... Uh, I'm looking forward to reading more from this author, who is Melissa Scrivener Love. Um, I'm looking forward to more from this author. This was a, this is a debut. Um, it's about a street gang, um, and the, I can't say too much more about it because there's a twist involving the gang. Um, but it's a Hispanic gang in, I think, East L.A. I can't remember. It's been years since I read it. Um, but there were certain parts that took me out of the story. It's a good book. It's just not a great book. Um, but I think that with more time, um, and she especially got some medical issues wrong, like how fast uh, lab results come back for sepsis and things like that, it is a very CSI, like, you know, as soon as it was taken, it was, the blood was taken, they found out that the person was septic or whatever it was. I can't remember exactly. So certain aspects took me out of the story. But yeah, other, otherwise, it's a, it's a good book. Next up. This is probably going up for sale. I don't know. Um, I might try it pretty soon. Everybody tells me how creepy it is, but I don't know. It's The Stepford Wives by uh, Ira Levin. Um, I might check it out. I might not. I don't know. I bought Sliver, and then I just ended up selling it. This one's got deckled edges, too, so I might actually read this one. <laughs> All right, next up are three books that look like uh, book club editions. These are going up for sale. So, again, I have absolutely no interest in these because they look like just your typical thrillers. Linda Castillo's A Gathering of Secrets. These are the book, uh, book club smaller editions of hardcovers. Okay. Chevy Stevens' Never Let You Go. Is this one? Again, I just got these to resell. Just got these to resell. And then The Perfect Stranger by Megan Miranda. I've sold three copies of All the Missing Girls by this author, so I'm hoping this one sells just as well. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, oh, and I also got, this is for sale also. Uh, Tim O'Brien's, because I already have a hardcover, a hardcover of this. I haven't read it yet, but I'm going to very soon, probably in November. Uh, the things they carried. I think it's a story of Vietnam. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But yeah, so Tim O'Brien's things they carried. So that one's up for sale also, because I already have a nice hardcover. Now on to books that I bought either at uh, at Abe Books or Brandon Spranken New there, buddy. Sometimes Abe Books is better. Okay. So, I got Cabal by Clive Barker. I got Galilee 
by Clive Parker. And I got... Uh, shoot. Wait, weave world. I can't get my fingers out of the way. They're too fat. How's this? Yes. Weave world. I got all of these for about $4 a piece on, uh, on a, whatchamacallit, uh, on eight books. And it was free shipping, so I figured why not. I didn't want to take the chance. Uh, me and my friend Cammy are going to eventually, she's having uh, computer problems right now, but we're eventually going to do our read-along, our chronological read-through of Clive Barker's books. Just waiting on her. I don't want to leave her in my dust. So, yeah, just be, be patient with us. Um, next up is a book that I've been looking for forever. I hate that I missed it in hardcover, um, but I didn't, it's either I didn't have the budget for it, or many different things came up. Actually, I spent money on a Book of the Month Club edition of another book called, uh, Golden State, uh, which I thought was this book, but it was not. I'm dumb, because the author of this one is a female, and the author of the other one was a male, so I was just a complete and utter idiot. But it's THE Golden State by Lydia Keisling. Keisling? I'm not sure how to pronounce that last name, but I think it's Keisling. C anyways, but <laughs> this one is about, uh, well, let me just read it to you. Because this one, I actually read the description, and that's what drew me in. Daphne has had enough. A young mother bucking under the weight of being a single parent. Her Turkish husband was forced to surrender his green card. She flees her sensible but strained life in San Francisco and heads for the high desert of Alta Vista, somewhere I know personally. Uh, that's another reason why I bought it. Um, so she heads to the high desert of Alta Vista with her toddler, Honey. They take refuge in a mobile home Daphne inherited in hopes that the quiet will bring clarity, but clarity proves elusive. Instead, Daphne is anxious. She drinks too much. She wanders the town looking for anyone and anything to punctuate the long hours alone with the baby. Among others, she meets Cindy, a neighbor who is active in the state of Jefferson secessionist movement, and befriends the elderly Alice, who has traveled to Alta Vista as she approaches the end of her life. But when Daphne's relationships with these women culminate in a dangerous standoff, she is forced to reconcile her inner narrative with reality. I'm a huge fan of people that run away, that run, you know, that run off somewhere new, that try to start over again, and especially if starting over again proves just as troublesome and bothersome as their original life, or worse. I am super stoked to read this one. This is going to be another November read. I'm going to be reading a lot in November. The cooler weather um, means I read even more than normal because I will sit outside and read. Um, I'll also be doing quite a bit, uh, quite a few audiobooks because I'll be walking even more. But there's that one. Next one up is Ohio by Stephen Markley. This Joker was marked down to eight bucks for a brand new paperback. And it's Simon and Schuster. They almost never do that. But this is Ohio. I'm going to read you the description of this one also. Uh, one sweltering night in 2013, four former high school classmates converge on their hometown in northeastern Ohio. There's Bill Ashcraft, a passionate, drug-abusing young activist, I'm all for that, whose flailing ambitions have taken him from Cambodia to Zuccotti Park, to post BP New Orleans. I'm all about that too. I think that's going to be cool to read about. And now back home with a mysterious package strapped to the undercarriage of his truck. Stacy Moore, a doctoral candidate reluctantly confronting her family and the mother of her best friend and first love whose disappearance spurs the mystery at the heart of the novel Dan Eaton, oh sorry, at the heart of the novel. Dan Eaton, a shy veteran of three tours in Iraq, home for a dinner date with the high school sweetheart he's tried desperately to forget, and the beautiful, fragile Tina Ross, whose rendezvous with the washed-up captain of the football team triggers the novel's shocking climax. There's more about how it all takes place over a single evening in this Ohio town. That sounds awesome. Um, it reminds me of, not Crash, but there was a, what was the movie? It's like 1113 or 1111, I can't remember what it's called. I think Patrick Swayze was in it, I can't remember, but it all happened. Every single one of the segments all led up to the same time. And then it stopped and started over from somebody else's point of view. And that, that sounds cool. That might be what this is like, it might not be. But a, a book that is, it's going to be interesting to see how an author got through a 484 page book to make that much of a book out of one evening. Um, next up, we, I, got, I finally found 
a copy of, this was at Ollie's, it was on clearance, I have a review copy up there with my other review copies, but uh, this is watching you, so I finally got the hardcover, I thought I'd bought this when it came out, but I did not, but I finally snagged a copy, this is a terrific book, is one of the best thrillers of the year it came out. Next up, um, this one, actually this was a mix-up, because I actually got this one uh, in my dollar haul, Recursion! By Blake Crouch. I already have a copy of this, but I grabbed another one, so I'll probably be selling this one. But Recursion is a brand new book. Brand new. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this. But so I guess somebody donated it um, to to the library, and it was it was on the shelf. I grabbed I grabbed this one so quick. I saw it shining because it's nice and yellow. It's also a very cool cover. See that? Yeah, the uh, the silver in there, that mirror finish kind of deal. It does a rainbow if you. You do that? Yeah, it's cool. Anyways, so and next up we have uh, one that I also found at Ollie's that was on clearance, and that is David Wong's What the Hell Did I Just Read? This is the third book. This is the third book in his John uh, Dies at the End series. I do not have the second book, and I have the first book in soft cover, but I mean, I couldn't pass it up. I think it was three or four bucks. Three ninety nine, I think. Um, with my Ollie's discount, it's probably you know less than three bucks. Last, but certainly not least, I know we've been here forever, and for you troopers who out there who watched the entire video, thank you so much for hanging around. Um, this one, I was going to put it at the beginning, but I didn't, and I forgot. <laughs> but one of my favorite books of all time is, and one of the only, one of the only, other than John Green books, YA books that I really love and really adore is Grasshopper Jungle. It's an amazing book. It's original. It's a book that was written by Andrew Smith um, because he was tired of writing your typical YA. So he just threw everything out the window, stopped all that, and then wrote this batshit crazy book that just ended up being amazing. And now we have a sequel. It's Exile from Eden by Andrew Smith. It's also a great cover. And also, I had a new book bark from Terry. It says, uh, not meow, I'm reading, and it has a little demon kitty down here. Well, they're all demons. All cats are demons. They're all evil entities, uh, possessed by Satan. Um, down here you have a kitty with glasses on. It's very, very cute. It looks innocent, like it's not summoning the devil from the bowels of hell. But you know, you know that's what it's doing in its spare time. But this is just, it's pretending. But, but we, we all like to pretend that, that they're nice, innocent creatures. And, and there you have it. So you have a demon... Uh, with glasses. It's very cute. Thank you very much, Terry, if you hung around for the entire thing. Anywho, so that's everything I have to share with you today. Um, I, the, book, book hauls are my favorite content on YouTube, so if you have a book haul video that you'd like to share with me, please leave the link down there in the doobly-doo, or say, hey, go check out my newest book, book haul. Uh, did I say book haul? I hope I said book haul. Anyways, um, but they're my favorite content, so please share. If you don't have a video, then just type all the books that you got down there in the comment section. I read through all of the comments. I may not respond to everyone a anymore, all the time now, but I do read every single comment. So yeah, leave that down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another book haul video. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!